Hey Colin, just uh, thinking of you and I thought I would call in as I get ready in this very tired morning coming back to school. I don't know how you're doing at school, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're settling into the career and uh, yeah, having some fun with it um, and I just wanted to check in really. Um, so yeah, as I said, hope you're well and um, you know, maybe you'll have to let us know how it's going at some point, it would be lovely to get a bit of an update on that whole thing you're going through right now. In the meantime, game on, man. Hello, I'm Colin Green, and you are listening to Spike Pit. Dude, Colin, I have such mixed feelings about your reading. On one hand, I absolutely love them, but on the other hand, I get so sad every time you finish. <laughs> You start reading and I get so invested and then it's over. I'm like, no, (laughs) these, your readings are my first and only and possible ever exposure to the fighting fantasy books. And I, I just think they're fantastic, man. They get me pumped. I get why so many people like them. Back when I was a kid, you know, in the 80s, when I could still uh, read physical books, we had the choose your own adventure books, which were cool and I loved them, but they didn't have dice or paper involved. So, yeah, these these fighting fantasy books get me pumped. I, I really like the fact that in a couple of your readings, the adventure starts with like a challenge, you know, the heroes going off to fanfare and everything. I've never started a campaign like that. It's pretty interesting. Peace out. Hi, Colin. You're on here. Um, yeah, we're in lockdown again. So I've uh, taken the opportunity to catch up on a lot of your podcasts. Uh, and I uh, really wanted to thank you for going over the old fighting fantasy uh, books. Um, I've been enjoying uh, your readings of them. Um, and it's inspired me to get back and collecting the, what I, you know, all my other books that I'm missing. And I'm sure it's inspiring other people too. And I'd really like to hear more about um, your teaching and your uh, what's happening with you with um, you know your other endeavours. Uh, thanks again. I'll talk to you soon. A big thanks to our callers then with their well wishes and enthusiasm and support for my readings of fighting fantasy. They uh, were cut off in their prime. I'd intended to do some more fighting fantasy readings. It will hopefully be something I'll come back to. But, yeah, we heard from Che, Yvonne and Joe. It's um, really these types of call-ins, as I've said many times before, that keep me coming back and by way of some sort of explanation and to to answer these callers i recorded a segment earlier on explaining what i've been up to so take it away mr green yes folks back on the mic just a quick one um deeply immersed in my new identity as mr green (laughs) Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. The routine is uh, very different to my former routine. And apparently, my well, my wife reliably informs me that I seem happier than I have seen for a long time. Um, sometimes other people have got a, a better read on things like that. And um, I've no reason... To doubt my wife. It, it's funny because I felt like I was fine, but guess there was some room for improvement. As busy as I am, it is super rewarding. It, it's I'm only six weeks in, uh, and I know it's very early in my career, but already had some great days, some great moments with the kids. A most recent example, a story I can tell you is after an assessment, doing some practical, a little bit of basic metal working, teaching the kids how to use some uh, computer-aided design software to to 
print their designs on a laser cutter and the idea being just to get them into the into the process we did some theory about design work and it was a four five week block and at the end we were just going down through the register as kids were writing up their evaluations calling them up and being able to tell some of the the pupils that had um, been previously graded a little bit low to in perhaps their more academic subjects or traditionally academic subjects to tell them that they had jumped up a couple of grades with their practical work and their 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 design and their their metal working project to tell them that they had achieved and to watch them as you explain in how well they've done to see the the growing smile some of the kids actually kind of jumped with joy as they'd kind of been bumped up a couple of grades with their achievement on the other hand it was quite it was quite hard to mark down there were two students that had let themselves down a little bit they'd they'd not kept their focus and they hadn't done quite as well as they maybe expected they would they'd rested on their laurels and we had to pull them up sharp and say you know you need to turn this around you're you're able to do better work than this and it was still quite positive to see straight away on their faces this recognition that maybe they'd made some perhaps not great decisions and a resignation that they they would try harder next time and you could see they really really took this seriously took it on board that they needed to work harder and it will be good to see if um, if they turn it around next time so it's just been fascinating it's been a whirlwind journey uh, and unfortunately the role playing has taken a major back seat still playing a version of 5e using star wars and my brother's running that he's using a uh, a module that was written for Edge of the Empire. It's a, a heist kind of idea, a dual heist on um, on Bespin. Uh, the, the name of it is escaping me now, but it was designed for the Fantasy Flight Star Wars. Uh, I believe he's had some, mm, some difficulty. He's not been totally satisfied with with how he's, he's worked the conversion but I'm still enjoying it it is there's quite a lot of talking and planning and things like that I'm fine with that perhaps my my youngest son mm, not so much but you know it's different it's a different style of play we're trying something different and, and you've got to do that you've got to try different things talking of different things I was listening to uh, Mr Connolly on a Nerds RPG Variety Cast talking about my brother's new game Dex that he's been playtesting for some time but just recently with his um, rewrite of the rules and kind of production of a, a really good first working draft uh, he's been getting in some more playtesting I heard that's been going well now if you're interested in that, look him up. It's Fed, or you can get in touch with me and I can put you in touch with him. But he's on various different discords. You can get to him via my Patreon, uh, Spike Pit Patreon, or you can jump on the Audio Dungeon Discord, catch up with him there. Register your interest and I'm, I'm sure he'll um, get you involved. You can find out more about it by listening to Jason's fairly recent episode where he talks about playing decks and he, he gives a, a good summary of the rules there it's uh, it's a fantasy rpg basically using cards instead of dice there's a deck building element in there um, that allows you to do a little bit of card counting so it's not quite as random as a game with dice what else have i been up to um well, not a lot, honestly, but I have listened to some quite interesting podcasts. One of them is the most recent episode of Designed for Life. 
It's got a board game designer. He's a, he started out as an industrial designer and worked for Hasbro at one point, putting games together. There's some really good insight in there, and I found it interesting. It's It's got, you know, if you've got any aspirations for doing a bit of design or you're interested in the process of how games are made and come into being... It's it's a good less uh, it's a good listen about an hour long, uh, and I I can heartily recommend it. Now talking of game designers and folks who are really into their different types of games, I've had a a call in from old buddy Barney from Loco Ludus, and he makes an interesting point about splitting the party. It's one of those cliches in gaming. I don't know if it started out with the original D&D, but it's certainly been around a long time, this idea of never splitting the party. Uh, invariably, parties get split all the time. And Barney's got some thoughts on this one. I'm going to play out with Barney's message, but I would add at one stage there, he's talking about group roles and and checks and i just wanted to mention that i actually use group roles when i'm running 5e quite a lot we use a, a kind of i think it's a variant rule i don't know that it's uh, sort of set in stone in any way in the rules if if in fact any of the rules are really but the way we do group checks is Everybody who's eligible to make a check will make the check. We um, add up the um, number of passes and fails. And if there's more passes, or if there's a yeah, if there's more passes than fails, or it's the same, they're equal. The check is passed. And if you make more fails than passes, the check is failed it's as simple as that but have a listen to barney see what you think and if you've got something to say you know what to do take it away barney hi colin it's barney i hope you're doing well looking at the calendar i reckon that you must now have started your whole teacher training business properly and everything and i'm sure that that is um exciting and uh, exhausting in equal measure. For me, the, the the school year started quite quite well actually, and I'm really trying to enjoy it, um, and that's going fine. And um, yeah, I don't know. I I think I think every year that goes by, I suppose. You know, every academic year that goes by, you feel a little bit more confident about the the stuff that you do. But of course, the real reason I'm calling is to do with the glorious gaming hobby that we that we have. Um, and this is about splitting the party. You know that I love splitting the party. I've got no problems with that whatsoever i think it's i think it's optimal fun for for players as much as gms i th- really think splitting the party is is gold it's treasure and i especially think that 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 ability to kind of cross cut creates really nice uh play structures but there's something else there's a little there's a little point There's a little point to all of this. I think whenever we're asking players to roll individual roles separate from the group, I think we're always splitting the party because we're kind of saying, well, you can you can see about that. But no one else can. And you can see about that, but no one else can. It's this kind of micro splitting. 
I mean, the alternative to that, which I had in a game the other day, is is basically saying to people, you can all make a perception check. Now, to do that all the time, you lose something for sure. But at the same time, that's really playing to the fact that they are a group and that those wishes that one of them might have might be applicable to the whole group, the group as a whole. So what am I getting at here with all of this? I'm getting at the fact that when we carve up the group to to get characters to make individual roles and and block block others from making that same kind of role, we are basically splitting the party. So it's it's almost inherent in what we do. And that in the contract between between players and the GM so either we could we could put we could have the possibility to to push further into a kind of group think group activity or we can also just push and push and and split and split and split and do that at more and more distance if you like with more and more detail that's all i think see you bye And that, as they say, is a wrap. Big thanks goes out to you, the listener, for taking a bit of time out of your day to listen to old Spike Pit. Take care, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>